And we are in the midst of a terrible flu season. It is proving to be one for the record books. How can you prevent the flu from entering your home, your office, uh, your car? Joining me right now, Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky, or as we love to call him, Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, good to see you. Good to see you. So first, give us the backdrop. I mean, so many people even canceled on our show. They have the flu. People that your friend. I mean, it's really bad this season. It's really bad, and I'm glad to hear that people are canceling on the show. Not because I don't want them to come on, right. but because I don't want them to spread the flu. That's a big problem. You see it even in celebrity life, they'll go to the award shows, they'll get on stage, claim their award and say, oh, by the way, I have the flu. And then 15 minutes After later, hugging they're hugging and, and they're kissing everybody, and signing touching autographs. The mic, and somebody else touches the mic. But that's attention-seeking behavior, is it not? Because if they had this real flu, they wouldn't be able to stand yeah. up on a stage. Yeah, yeah you're right. I mean, true, the flu right? affects people differently, so I don't want to make judgments there too early, but I will say, if they do have the flu, horrible, horrible, horrible to go outside and spread it to people, you have to stay home. Because the flu spreads through contact, through breathing. In fact, a lot of people think, oh, if I sneeze in a room, that means it, it can get to somebody six feet away. No, get this. You can sneeze in an empty room. Someone can walk in an hour later, and you flu germs are still hanging out in the air. So, an hour later? Yes. So, Dr. Mike, is, there, is this flu season worse than other flu seasons? And is it because this strain is not being treated by the flu vaccine? And if yes, how do we fix that going forward? So, great question. We don't have a perfect answer to it because we get a lot of the statistics of the flu that we have right now after the season has concluded. What we do know, this peak is an incredibly high peak. It came early and it's lasting an extra long time. So, we have record number of hospitalizations, record number of pediatric deaths, and all of this is coming earlier on in the flu season than we usually what, expect to what's see. What's so it. devastating about this flu? Is it the gastrointestinal distress? Is it the fever that is causing the most uh, health risk? Well, the, the way that I like to explain it is it's not the flu that really takes you down. It's the complications from the flu that mm. takes you down. Think about your immune system as being an army and it's fighting this infection and it's going to fight off the infection. That's not really the worrisome if you have an intact immune system. The worry is that in the midst of having this battle, the battlefield, aka your respiratory tract, your nose, your throat, your lungs, mm -hmm. it gets damaged through inflammation. And that can lead to bronchitis, pneumonia, and those are the serious illnesses that actually claim your life. Yeah, these are these are different, uh, you know, things that you're getting with the flu versus a common cold. I mean, exactly. This is very different. Dr. Mike, great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dr. Mike, for joining us there.